Hello guys and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Courier Mode. Now in the last episode you guys voted and we are going to be traveling to the pink planet known as Eve. And boy, this mission could not have had more disasters in it if I had tried. If I'd been putting up a video called Disasters in KSP, it would have had less disasters than this one in it. But we'll get more on that later. Right now we are building ourselves a new and improved lander because the one we have been using is getting a bit out of date now that we have fins like those ladders that we unlocked in the last episode when we did the polar expedition. So you can see I am setting up a well, just sort of your normal lander here. It's got fuel, it's got science, it's got some parachutes. I put some radio tanks on the sides just to give us that little bit more fuel since we're doing that little bit of a bigger mission. And I put some electric charge on because if we don't manage to get back, I want to be able to transmit all the lovely science that we managed to get. I don't want it all to go to waste. And I stick on a docking port because the plan is to get up off Kerbin, then meet up with our satellites we put up, refuel, and then head off to Eve. I think that's a very good plan. That's what we're going to be doing today. So you can see me aligning everything up, trying to check if there's anything I've forgotten. I need to put RCS on because we're going to do our very first docking in this episode, and it is actually my very first one. I have never docked two craft together when playing KSP off camera. Normally I've done everything I do that I'm doing in a video, I've already done it at least once before. Not this time, we're trying something new and it comes back to bite me of course, but more of that later on as I keep hinting. So, remembering to put the engine on, because I almost forgot, believe it or not, that would have been a little bit embarrassing, wouldn't it? We pretty much finish up our lander, and it looks pretty cool, I've got to admit, especially with those aerodynamic looking struts. So I stick this on the launch stage that we already had built previously. I just preloaded that one back in and we're ready to launch. Oh, but first I need to give it a name and it's going to be something unoriginal as always like Eve Explorer, because why not? And I'm replacing Jebediah Kermin, the veteran, with Hans Kermin, who is the most stupid Kermin, because stupidity is actually one of the stats they give them. He's the most stupid Kerbin that I could possibly find because of course you would have to be completely idiotic to agree to go on this suicidal mission to Eve. But we found someone who's doing it and the mission is going ahead. So I'm going pretty sped up here because you've seen me do this launch into orbit I think now five or six times already. So I'm sure you don't want to dwell on it too much. What is cool is you can actually see the engine in the center twitching there and that is a thing called vectoring which is where the engine changes the direction very very minutely that it is pointing to correct for things like a weight unbalance for example those radial mounted fuel tanks they are not exactly symmetrical because I wanted them to drop off in pairs and the slight difference will make the ship lean slightly to one edge but by the engine altering itself slightly it can compensate for that and let us go straight. There's a bit of science for you, I hope I didn't bore you too much with that. But anyway, we're boosting up now, our apoapsis was low so I pointed up a bit to get us back on track before turning, do my gravity turn once again. And when we get to around the same height, it's time just to jump up here with a bit of time warp and then burn horizontally forward prograde and we're about to drop our tanks because they're about to run out of fuel before we see our periapsis appear over on the opposite side of Kerbin just about and almost there we go no oh, oh there we go a bit early and anyway now we also have an encounter so this is perfect but I'm going to cut and why am I going to cut, you might ask? Well, you see here, we're going in, we've got an encounter. What could possibly be wrong? Well, you want to know what could possibly be wrong? This is the first thing that went wrong with this mission. And here it is. 
What's this, you might ask? How do we suddenly get here? This is footage of me trying to dock with the Kerbin Station at 1000% real time. That means it is sped up to 10 times what it should be. In, for the entirety, it took me about half an hour to finally get this dock to work. And you're going to see why right here. So I'm trying to get my relative velocity low enough that I can just drift towards the station. But this big colossal tank is having an awful job at trying to get it to work. Eventually, any time I try and burn retrograde, my motion flips quicker than I can turn the ship and we end up boosting too far in another direction. Eventually, I get the relative velocity down to under one meter per second, so something we can actually work with. And I try to move us over using the RCS, and that's when I realize I forgot to put RCS boosters on the launch stage, meaning I cannot control the thing with RCS. So I have to jettison the launch stage and go to the much more agile and controllable lander that we're going to now dock onto the fin. And some of you who have played Kerbal Space Program are probably screaming out the mistake I've made. If not, you'll see it in just a moment. But I mean, of course I've never docked before, so I'm trying to work out how this whole fin works. I give myself a bit of momentum towards the station, try and line myself up, and I miss at the very last moment. So I jettison back, and because my RCS isn't aligned very well, I have to point this way to get my momentum back. And coming in, I'm going to crash, I'm going too fast, so I have to jettison off to the side. That's two attempts now, we have failed at docking. This is now, I believe, over 20 minutes into the process, because again, this is sped up incredibly fast. So I accidentally burn up, and I've got to get my rotor velocity back down low and get close again. So I have to do that for the second time. So eventually I'm drifting kind of towards the ship and I've got a very low rotor velocity which is all good fins. So I come in and I align myself along each axis one by one and we drift in and finally after a bit of jiggling we dock and that is when I realise I dropped the launch stage around 20 minutes ago. The launch stage with the big fuel tanks and the big engine and the whole point of getting docked was to refuel that. Without that big engine and all that fuel, there is not a hope in hell of this craft getting to EVE. All of this half hour I just spent trying to dock was a complete and utter waste. And there's not really much I can do about it, to be honest. So, I'm refueling this ship, this complete disaster of a mission, and it's about now that it hits me. And it does actually look quite cool, doesn't it, docked on the side there? But it is useless, and because I didn't have a big docking port on the bottom of the station, I can't even launch up a new launch stage and stick it on the bottom and boost the whole thing over. That won't even work. And there's no way I can get a launch stage attached to that ship easily without it taking up another two or three videos, that's for sure, especially with my skill. So there's not much I can do really. So I have to cut. Luckily I do quick save every now and then and I did quick save before this half hour of nonsense. So we have to go back. So here we are back where we were half an hour for me, around three minutes for you, before all of that ridiculousness. So rather than completely scrapping the mission I decide screw it. We do have quite a good amount of fuel left. We might not be able to get back, but we'll definitely be able to get there, or at least I hope we will. There would have to be another terrible disaster for that not to work, wouldn't there? So I decide we're just going to gun it. We're going to go straight for EVE without trying to dock with anything, which to be honest is probably a better idea anyway. So I get my apoapsis high to try and tie warp, but it doesn't get high enough. So I go back to the tracking station and it doesn't let me time warp because that's not how it works so I put a probe head on the runway and because that hasn't launched yet I use that to time warp eventually at the maximum rate and Eve, the purple one, we know it's going to be moving faster than us because it's in a circle around the sun smaller than us because it's closer, the sun will be putting a greater gravity force on it so it will have to move faster 
If it was moving at the same speed as us, it would be pulled in quicker and just fall into the sun. So by that logic, we know it will overtake us while we are boosting over to it. So we want to launch at about the stage we are now with Eve behind Kerbin. So that it will catch up to our craft as we drift over into its trajectory, its orbit. So with that little bit of a science lesson out the way, I jump back into our launch stage slash lander. What was it called? Eve Explorer, that's it. And I play around with getting us a nice um, trajectory that we can shoot out and intercept with Eve. And I realise right now my estimated burn time is NA. That's not good because I don't know how to judge when I should start burning. So I turn my engine on just for a fraction of a second to try and get it to register a number. I believe I do that now and it says 14 seconds I think that says or something like that. Oh, 45 was it? I can't remember, but that seemed really low. And as a fact, when I start burning, it jumps up to one and a half minutes. Luckily, I thought it was too low and started burning early, thinking this would happen. So there is a little... don't know why I thought it would be more, but it was a good call. Thankfully, something went right on this mission. So you can see me burning pro-grade. We're getting our apoapsis way up, out of curb and reach escape velocity very quickly. And now we move over. As we predicted, Eve is catching up with us as it is traveling faster than us. And when we hit our, I think it's a descending node, this is basically the point. Because we're at different angles, our two circular orbits, they cross over at this point. So if at this point I burn directly north, I can change the inclination of my orbit to match that of Eve. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. So I burn and there we go, we are now in complete alignment with the EVE orbit, which means we can get an encounter. And as you can see by our closest encounter lines on that plotted dotted line bit, we're getting slightly closer with each adjustment I'm making and eventually very close to- we have an intercept! Hooray! It's going great, isn't it guys? I mean, what could be better? We've got an intercept. And I did a little jump there because I paused for a bit, but that wasn't anything you're missing, don't worry. So I burn, and I forget to leave my SAS on. Terrible mistake number two, because the the engine just drifts down, and we burn in some crazy direction and lose all that inclination, and now we're on low fuel, and everything is going wrong that possibly could. Why am I an idiot? Someone please tell me in the comments why I'm such an idiot and I can't do this mission. This is meant to be one of the first missions you do, isn't it? I mean, it's one of the first planets. Surely this is one of the first ones you do. It should be easy. Why is it going so terribly wrong? I have no idea. Anyway, I eventually... We get another intercept after I ruined our first one. And I play around trying to see if I can get anything better, and I can't really. So we burn over until we get captured by the sphere of influence of Eve. I think this is actually, I'm a bit ahead of myself. This is me now playing around trying to get a better one and not. And now we go and get captured. And I try and predict using manoeuvre nodes how long it is going to take me to actually burn to get back in and if I have enough fuel and I think it's gonna work so I decide to go for it instead of trying to loop back to Kerbin. So this is the make or break point. This is where the decision it's all or nothing now. If we go for it we are not coming back from this mission and of course we're going for it because we put a really stupid pilot on so it doesn't matter. There we go, we get our periapsis and we bring it down, it disappears, meaning we're on a collision course, which is what we want with Eve, the purple planet. And I jettison the launch stage, you can almost see it there behind my nav ball, there it is. It is really a beautiful place, look at that atmosphere, that is fantastic, isn't it guys? Love it. So, we enter. We are doing over 4,000 meters per second. The G-force goes off the scale. We are decelerating by over 100 meters per second per second. We hit the air resistance. Eve apparently has a really thick atmosphere because we slow down incredibly quickly once we get into this thicker part of the atmosphere. 
so I drop my parachutes, we burn slightly, I turn off SAS to let us drift so we are vertically down and not holding ourselves at any crazy angle, and we drift down. I use some of the fuel to slow us a bit because we're not going to be coming back, there's no need for this fuel anymore, I may as well use it. And coming down, we start to see the floor, getting very close now. I check where the sun is, and then I spot our shadow. That's always a good indication of when you're going to land. Parachutes deploy successfully, which is good, because that doesn't always happen, maybe because of the struts we added. And lowering it, getting closer now, and... And... We make it! Excellent, guys! We made it to Eve. Finally, something goes right on this mission at last. So, I decide I'm going to transmit all the data I can to try and get ourselves some more tech. I realise you get pretty much nothing for repeat experiments now, which is probably a good thing. So I don't bother doing that one again. And transmitting all the data. Get crew report. Um, get a observing the mystery goo. Get a materials bay. I EVA, I'm going to extend the ladders, repack the parachutes, all that nonsense, so we can get down to the ground and get some surface samples as well as an EVA report. And I fall off the ladder because I'm impatient and didn't let it unfold all the way. Luckily, Hans is a very stupid Kerbal, so he's not going to sue us, which is a good thing. So... I get that EVA report, and of course I can't transmit it because I'm not in the craft, I just have to store the data for now. And then I plant a flag, now I've taken a surface sample now. And we're here, I'm going to call it again, something very unoriginal as is the fashion with this series. And I'm going to take a lovely screenshot to go on the video, which is hopefully why you clicked. Because look at that, we made it guys. Brilliant. So, what should I do now? I've got all the science, I've transmitted it back. What should I do? Should I just leave him stranded here? Well, first thing is I want to transmit those experiments I just took, the surface sample and the EVA report, so I'm going to do that. And then you know what? Why don't we try and get him in orbit, and maybe in the future we could dock with this craft in orbit and bring him home. That would be nice. A hero's return. I don't see why we shouldn't do that. Or maybe... Yeah, let's do it. Why not? So I burn full throttle and oh, Eve turns out is a very dense planet and has an extremely strong gravitational field. So strong that my tiny little poodle engine cannot even lift us off the surface, even a craft as light as this one. So we're stranded here on the surface. Mistake number three. So, it was filled with disasters, but good news, we did get enough science to unlock a new tech. And I have a look around to try and decide what it is I actually want to get. And finally, I do pick this one, Specialized Control. It gives us bigger um, control, what are they called? Um, command pods, that's the word. Bigger command pods that hold three people, so we can hopefully take three times as many experiments, is what I'm thinking. Don't know if it works like that, but we'll find out next time. And also, by unlocking that, we unlock the ability to try and go for the atomic nuclear engine, which is amazing and I want to get so badly, because I haven't actually used it yet, even outside of this Let's Play. But that'll be for another time, so... Thank you guys for watching, as always, and please do let me know why I'm such an idiot and why everything goes wrong. <laughs> oh god, nothing is easy. Right, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.